Hello everybody and welcome to TV8's 2005-2006 High School Basketball Preview Show. My name is Mike Martin, joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, we got a lineup of uh, really great coaches this year, uh, one newbie in the group. Yeah, we do. We have uh, Lutheran co head coach uh, Todd Decker, who's coming off a conference championship a year ago. Brett Flipsey, whose Christian team, I believe, won just a couple years ago and is ready to compete again. We have, of course, Sheboygan North's Tom Desatel, who had to rally the troops last year and again got another conference championship. And Tim Schultz, who's actually a Plymouth native, is uh, now taking over uh, at Sheboygan South. Plymouth, or pardon me, Tim was a coach at uh, New Holstein last year for a couple of years. Yes, he, he was, and uh, he has some brothers that are coaches in, I believe, down in Waukesha as well, so uh, a lot of basketball in his family. We got a couple other things lined up that we want to do. We're going to uh, discuss the conference races in the Fox River Valley and the Central Lakeshore Conference. We also want to talk about uh, the all-city picks, and uh, this is something that the press has done for, gosh, it seems like about 12 or 13 years. And it's kind of an interesting thing to do it ahead of time, so we'll talk about that. And then we also want to talk about some underclassmen, Chris, that uh, might have an impact this year. Well, I think it's just going to be an exciting year again for uh, basketball, and we always look forward to it. It's been a couple weeks since the football season, so I'm ready to go. We're going to step out right now, and when we come back, Chris will have Lutheran head basketball coach Todd Decker. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. I'm with uh, Sheboygan Lutheran head coach Todd Decker. Uh, conference championship last season must have been pretty exciting. Yeah, it was a it was a good time for us. It was a great uh, run for us that we had, and uh, satisfying for both players and coaches. And it was real good for our school and our program. Now at Lutheran, you've had some coaches there for a long time. Uh, I know Mike's been with you for for just about since the beginning. Do you think that helps in uh, consistency in your program? Oh, definitely. Um, Mike Theobald, like you said, has been here for 10 years with me. Um, he knows uh, the things that I want. We've had a veteran JV coach now that's been there for a number of years, freshman coach for three or four. Um, yes, because then down the line, we know the drills and our plays, uh, kind of know what I'm looking for. And it helps when we get to the varsity level practice time and that those guys know the terminology so it's great to have an um, assistant coaching staff like I have, and they're, they're the behind-the-scenes behind uh, guys, and a lot of times they, get, they don't get that notoriety, but that's what makes a program of your assistant coaches. Well, let's talk a little bit about your team. Uh, you're really big up front this year. You know, we have some size. Uh, you know, John, at, uh, John Decker at 6'6", and uh, we have Adam Dillman at 6'4", and Andrew Haling's a big kid, so we do have some size. Um, they're not as experienced maybe inside because they didn't get much, a lot of playing time last year, but it's nice to have that size, and I know other schools look for that, and we're going to try to utilize that along with some guard play that we do have. Probably the uh, most asked question for you, and probably, you know maybe it never ever gets old for you, and so why should I be any different? But it's kind of hard to believe that John's actually a senior, and why don't you tell us a little bit about not just John, but some of the things he's worked on over the summer to improve his game. Well, he puts an incredible amount of time and work into his play um, every night, uh, every day. He had a schedule that he had to do and worked very hard this summer, worked AAU and did a lot of league specialty camps. Um, so it is hard to believe that it's, it's been four years. It's been a great blessing for me to be able to have, uh, be able to coach your son. And um, I, we're looking for big things. He showed a lot of leadership already. Uh, the guys follow him, but uh, his work ethic has really been uh, paying off. He's been really hitting uh, the ball handling, passing, footwork is what he really worked on this past year to be a little bit quicker, uh, work on that quickness and along with his shooting, he always loves doing that. So uh, <laughs> that's not going to be a problem for him. Yeah, it's hard to believe the four years are gone already. Yes, it is. It goes by uh, pretty quick. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you did graduate, you know, I, would you say four returning, or excuse me, four guys left to your program. So who are some of the new faces we're going to see for the uh, Crusaders this year? Well, we did, we're losing four starters. Uh, I'm real excited about Brian Immel. Uh, he's one of our guards, uh, uh, our captains. Uh, he really he went to a lot of camps with John this summer, and he turned some heads. So I think uh, he's going to be one of, the, one of the better guards, that I think, even in the city in our conference. 
and he's going to make some people go, where did that guy come from? I think he's going to help us. Zach uh, Hasenstein, I think he's going to be a junior. He'll help us out. He has some size. He's at 6'4". Uh, we have some guards of uh, like Matt Holler. Uh, he had some playing time for us last year. So we lose those starters, but we have some guys that I think will fill those holes. And um, they know what's up for grabs. Our practices, we've had a couple already, and they get after it. They know they, got to, they have that uh, uh, chance to be able to play. So it makes the practices pretty exciting. Well, I, we talked a little bit before as well. Uh, you can probably throw Oostberg and Kohler and Christian and Howard and, you know, throw them all in a big hat, and you could probably say, well, this team's got, you know, some strengths, this team's got some weaknesses. It should be a good race, though, this year in the CLC. Well, the CLC is always tough, and if you don't come ready to play every game, uh, it might be an old cliche, but in the CLC, uh, you, you have to be prepared. And, uh, you know, Oostberg, with their size, is always tough to handle. they got some nice players. Uh, but all the way down the line, I think Christian will be tough. Howard's has some really nice players that are difficult to defend and go up against. Uh, Kohler has some size this year, too. And, uh, you know, Cedar Grove may have some guys that are new, but they're always tough. They're well coached. All the teams are well coached in the CLC, so you have to really uh, be prepared. So it makes for an exciting season. And... Uh, I'm really glad that we're in a conference that we are with the quality coaches that we have. Well, thanks so much for coming in. We'll be seeing you in about a week or so. Uh, when we come back, uh, Marty will be with uh, Coach Flipsy from Sheboygan Christian. is Christian head basketball coach Brett Flipsey. Brett, thanks a lot for uh, coming out on this mean evening. It's really bad weather out there, people, when we're taping this show. Hey, you got a real nice squad coming back. You have three starters. Uh, one of them is picked to possibly be an all-city player by the end of the year. And uh, I know the basketball Bible has you picked at uh, finishing second in the conference. Uh, how do you feel about your squad and the conference race? Um, you know, preseason, it's always, we always have a great, a great team preseason, and when you look at the basketball Bible, that's really a, a nice thing to look at in the preseason, but it doesn't mean anything. Uh, we haven't played a game yet. Uh, we do have some nice players returning, and have a, we have a very deep squad this year, and that's one thing that I really look forward to, to coaching. And, um, you know, I think one of the biggest issues that we're going to have is, you know, our experience. You know, will the seniors be able to take us? You know, how far will they be able to take us? How quickly will the, you know, the juniors be able to step up and, and contribute? Now, this next question you could take a couple different ways. You know, say, well, what are your obstacles to winning the conference? You know, it could be the other teams. It could be, you know, an internal kind of a thing. But what do you see as obstacles to your team, you know, taking a conference championship this year? Well, again, you know, looking at it, the preseason, there's, the, our conference is very tough top to bottom. Um, you know, you've got your Oostbergs, your Howards Groves, Sheboygan Lutherans, you know, but don't look past the, the Cedar Groves and Random Lakes, you know, and, and, and not to let anyone else out. Um, our biggest obstacle is our experience. How quickly are the juniors going to be up to speed? Uh, we've got some very talented juniors. Um, again, they were 17-3 and three last year as a squad. Uh, but how quickly are they going to develop into, into varsity basketball players and how many of them, you know, will be able to contribute? So that's one of the biggest obstacles. You know, we can only do what, what we can do. Um, you know, we'll come up and face any team we, we can. We'll do, what, we'll do what's best for us. So One of the kids I mentioned earlier in our <clears throat> segment here was Justin Simmons, and uh, he's quite a ball player for, for your squad last year. Why don't you talk a little bit about him and what he brings to the table for, the, for your squad? Justin is a, is a very heady point guard. Um, we are, we're actually going to move him to off guard this year. And because we need his points, we need, we, you know, we'd like to move him to a position where he can actually, you know, get more looks. Um, a very strong player, um, plays within himself. Um, as you'll see if, if you watch us play, uh, probably one of the best defensive ball players you'll see in the conference. Um, not guy that's going to lead the conference in steals, um, but uh, is in, always in the right spot. Um, is always trying to make other players around him better. Uh, just a just a joy to coach. As a kid, he's he's always willing to work hard for you, be at every practice, and 
and give everything he's got for the team. Those are the kinds of kids that uh, really bring a lot to the table in terms of leadership. Yeah, absolutely. And again, um, Justin is only one part of our core. Uh, we've got a good group of kids coming back. And Let's talk about your two big guys inside, and that's uh, Tyler Veldkamp and uh, Vinny Adams, a uh, couple <clears throat> of big guys. And uh, you know that's part of the reason why teams are, or prognosticators are picking you high in the standings. What do those players offer? Well, we've, we've got a, a nice size team. We're not real huge. You know, we don't have the 6'9", six, 6'8 six, kids, but, but Vinny and Tyler are going to be a force down low. Uh, but the nice part about their games is they can also step outside. Uh, we've got a couple other <clears throat> nice size kids that, that can fill in down there. And, you know, maybe we can move, you know, if one of the big kids are guarding Tyler or, or Vinny, they can move outside. And, you know, they're good, complete players. They're, they, can, they can play inside. They're strong kids. And they can take you outside and be, and be a force with the ball. You're two wins away from 100 at Christian. What does that mean? Oh, it's, it's, a nice, it, it's, it's nice to hear that. You know, I don't really keep stats that way. You know, um, I didn't know that until you, know, you told me before <laughs> we went on the air. Um, that's a nice accomplishment. You know, it just means that doesn't mean that anything good has happened. It just means I've been there long enough. <laughs> Coach, I want to thank you for stopping out on this mean night. It's uh, been a pleasure talking. You're always a great interview. I'm glad when I get the opportunity to do it. When we come back, Chris is going to have North High basketball coach Tom Desitel. With uh, Coach Desitel from Sheboygan North, Coach, congratulations on another conference championship last year. wasn't too easy, but uh, looks like a little bit of a reloading year this year. Well, we lost a lot of good players off of last year's team. There's no question on that. When you lose uh, your top five, six, maybe even seven players, it's a uh, it's a year that uh, uh, we remember because uh, we had those guys with us a long time. Um, do you ever get nervous about playing such younger kids? Or I know they play a lot in the summer, and you that experience help a little bit or do you get worried once the season starts? I'm worried if that they're worried and so I've, I've got to build that confidence with them every day in practice. We've got to be testing them, we've got to be challenging, we've got to give them drills that make things more difficult for them than they are in, in regular games if we possibly can. Um, I see that the Raiders shootout again this year you got some outstanding teams again. Well it usually does us some good to play teams that we figure to be better than us. Uh, uh, the Raiders shootout has been one in which we've won one Raiders shootout championship in the last six years. Um, gee, one year we had uh, three Wisconsin Badger football players on the same team, one that recovered the winning fumble in one of the game, Eric Strickland, and then the a long snub, uh, snapper, and then, of course, Joe Thomas. Yep. And uh, so that toughened us up a little bit, as did uh, last year where we played De Pere, who lost one game last year and a uh, year before that. We, we just bring in good teams. I see you also uh, have a little trip down to Illinois as well. We're going to play a team in Illinois. I was uh, planning on playing uh, a team that wound up being the <laughs> Illinois State champion, and uh, they've got their top player back, and uh, he's going to Duke. And uh, the coach is a good friend of mine, and we were going we to play him actually in Milwaukee, and then that didn't work out. And we wound up playing a team that he felt would be very competitive. They keep getting asked to go to like national-type things as well. I see the conference this year maybe is not as strong as it's been in the past, but it would be probably a, a wrong thing to say that it's, it's not going to be very competitive. It's going to be extremely competitive. Well, I don't know. I, I think this year we return more uh, top players, uh, all conference players from the previous year than we did any other year. And unfortunately for us, uh, they're not North players, they're, they're opponents. Uh, we've got a player at Green Bay Southwest. Uh, we've got two starters that weren't all conference, but two starters from Sheboygan South. Manitowoc's got some honorable mention kids that were all conference. We've got an all conference player at Preble, and um, we've got the defending conference champion with us, Notre Dame. So uh, we'll have some competition uh, there from outstanding players with experience. Green Bay West. Uh, may have the most returning, and we didn't even mention them. Yeah, I think the conference is going to be extremely close. Um, this year might possibly be the last year of a north-south game at the Armory. Any final thoughts about that? Or? Well, um, it's, it's going to be something missing, I think, for the citizens of Sheboygan. Uh, I certainly hope that uh, 
Uh, they understand the importance of getting tickets to this final game. Uh, we've had some uh, spouses meet at the Armory for the first time. We've read about that in the newspaper. Uh, uh, I know it's been a large port, part of, our, of my life for 60-some uh, games uh, now, so that's how long I've been around. And, and some of the North-South games uh, uh, were certainly memorable, but we also had memorable games. We won a conference championship against Green Bay East one year when we couldn't get our gym down there. Uh, we played a memorial game, a memorable game with Oostburg, in which the place was sold out, and we played a memorable game with Kohler there. So there's a lot of memories down there, and fortunately for us, they've been successful ones. So uh, from that perspective, I, I enjoyed playing at the Armory. Uh, any kids that we can look for this year, you know, maybe stepping up for you this year for, with your squad? I think uh, we're, we're always uh, secure in having, uh, having some seniors to, to build around. We've got a, a Dave Moss, a Brad Schmitz, uh, we've got a TJ Ingles. We've got several seniors, uh, some of whom I didn't mention. Uh, but we also have got some uh, exciting players with skill. Uh, and those are younger players. They're sophomores. Every day the coaches keep coming to tell me, uh, boy, those kids are skilled. They're really skilled, and they've kind of opened the eyes of, uh, of the other people in the gym that these kids can play. And, and so we may be seeing some, uh, some uh, floor time for, for four sophomores. And we have to see how that develops as the year wears on as well. Um, just some final comments, Coach. Uh... I know you have some former players, you know, off of last year's team in the last couple of years. One, I know, uh, one's playing in Illinois, and got a couple of kids out at Lakeland, and we got, you know, of course, Kyle out of Platteville. Any comments on those gentlemen? Well, um, I'm going to try and and get down to see these guys whenever I can. We have 11 kids playing college sports now that played basketball at North. One's playing soccer. Two of them are playing uh, football, but eight are playing basketball currently. And I think that's really uh, testimonial to why I'm still coaching uh, because uh, we've had some fine, fine athletes come out of Sheboygan, kids that have continued their career playing uh, for the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan. We have two. We have two at uh, Lakeland. We have one at uh, Cardinal Stritch, one at Lake Forest, one at Platteville. Uh, who did I forget? I forgot one of them. <laughs> but uh, we've got eight of them. We've got one playing soccer. We've got two playing football. So uh, that's pretty exciting to follow. And uh, uh, I think we're just as proud, though, of the kids that are going on and, and continuing their careers with, uh, uh, with continuing education. Well, thanks so much, Coach, for coming in. And we uh, look forward to seeing your, your squad in the next couple of weeks. When we return, uh, Marty will be with Coach Schultz from uh, Green, or excuse me, Sheboygan South. is the new head basketball coach at Sheboygan South, Tim Schultz. Tim, thanks a lot for coming in and uh, being a part of our program. Uh, as you step into this job over at South, what are the biggest challenges for you? Well, I think the biggest challenges on a personal level is just um, stepping up a division and coaching, bigger conference, um, more kids um, going out for the teams, you know, like an extra freshman team that I wasn't used to, assistant coaches, getting everybody together, um, Challenge-wise, um, I don't think there's anything big and large in front of me besides the fact that uh, South is coming in this year with not a lot of experience. Um, we're starting with a brand new kind of philosophy on some different things that were done in the past. Um, there are some kids that are there that have been built up, uh, that Coach Koopman did a great job of building the younger kids up uh, that are ready to play varsity ball this year. Now, many of our viewers may not realize you teach in Plymouth, uh, seventh and eighth grade, and yet you're driving to Sheboygan. Now, this is really the same situation you were in last year, only you were driving over to New Holstein. What are some of the, you know, challenges in, in that kind of a situation? Well, for the last four years, I did that when I was at New Holstein, so I'm kind of used to um, some of the challenges, but the main thing is just time, just budgeting, uh, being able to and have an understanding staff that I work with at the school that I'm at, allowing me to leave maybe a little bit earlier. Um, I, I do have to show up a little bit earlier school in the morning, which can be rough if you're playing a night game. Um, but just a time issue. Also, uh, having I have to communicate with South Building on different things, announcements, and the staff there has been great. Uh, coach Peter Kautzer, who's the JV coach this year, is on staff, and he's been wonderful. 
uh, people in the office have been great. So it's just balancing everything out. And at New Holstein, I had it down, and at South, it's relearning it again and how they go through the process. Now, you mentioned before about style of play and that you're changing some things uh, with the way Coach Koopman did it. What, uh, what are your plans in terms of you know, style of play, what you plan to install, mm -hmm. and you know, who do you see even filling some of those roles? I know it's early. Right. Uh, well, being early, it's hard to say who's going to fill what roles, uh, but it's going to be uh, more of an up-tempo. Uh, people around here would be more familiar like with the Sheboygan Moore style, but it's different than that. Uh, somewhat similar, we want to play faster. All of our games we'd like to get into the 65, 70 point range if we can, ideally 60 points. Uh, trapping, full court, half court, uh, looking to run up and down the floor, uh, develop some three point shooting. Uh, those would be some areas that guys have to get used to. And right now I can't pinpoint exact guys. I mean, we have one returning starter and I'm at Hemsing, and you can look at him as being type of a, of, of a, of a leader for the team, mm -hmm. um, and some other seniors. Uh, Jamal Johnson has been playing very well early on in practice. Mike Weber um, and Andy Lancer being a returning player as well, kind of go with their experience. Matt is your lone returning starter, and uh, he didn't do a lot of scoring last year, and I know that's going to be a key element. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to play the up-tempo style, who do you see as players uh, putting the ball in a hole for you? Well, I think the guys that I mentioned, um, like Jamal Johnson, has been shooting, shooting very, very well early on. Uh, his legs have been underneath him. Mike Weber as well, which I don't think he felt he was a very good shooter last year. Hemsing has been doing it. Uh, Lancer, um, he has a little bit of the football going on in him right now, <laughs> but it's so early that that'll go away quick. In fact, his practice tonight, the shot was coming around. So those guys would be the guys, the key guys I would look at right now is scoring some points. Um, uh, Zach Duquette was another one that's played well. And just randomly kind of think of guys. And right, right. now we have 12 guys that have made the varsity team. Um, one guy who's injured right now, but I, I plan on playing like 10 of them at a time. One of the things, you, and you just kind of mm -hmm. stepped into my next question, that is, you know, when you play an up-tempo up style, you know, you're going to have to have depth on mm -hmm. your team. And I think a lot of times parents feel like, well, my child isn't starting, you know, there's something wrong. But there's something to be said for kids playing minutes and playing at key times. Right, I, I spend a lot of time in talking to uh, the guys in practice about, you know, if, if being a starter is that important to you, I'll start you. But if I pull you out after one minute, what does that mean? Um, it's all of a team type of thing, and if everyone's going to be able to play and get some minutes and get up and down the floor, that's the key point. And with our style of play, is exactly right. I mean, you have to look at it. If we want to play that up-tempo where we want to tire a team out in the fourth quarter, we need 10 guys playing all the time. And by doing that, it allows playing 10 guys and playing up-tempo allows minutes for guys instead of sitting on a bench for six, seven minutes or a quarter at a stretch. You know you're going to be playing. You know you're going to be loose. You know you're going to be out there. Okay. Tim, I want to thank you for stopping in. All the best of luck over at South High. When we come back, Chris and I are going to wrap up this evening's program. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Chris, we've got all the interviews in the books now. Let's talk a little bit about our feelings on the upcoming season and uh, some of the things that I had mentioned in the opening that we were going to talk about. Let's start off with some impact underclassmen that are going to be playing at uh, the high schools this year. Well, I think there's a few. Uh, Andy Lancer, of course, we know him from the football season. He's over at Sheboygan South. He's a big kid, and uh, he's one of those kids that's just a multi-athlete type player. He can do so many different things. I, I definitely think he's got to have a large impact for South to have any success this se season. Watch for the super sophomores over at Sheboygan North. Uh, Timmy Schwer, TJ Kellner, and, and Andy Eirich. Uh, they've worked a lot, very hard this summer on their game, and we'll see if those guys, first of all, make the club and then see their impact. They all have different roles. TJ is more of a slasher, Timmy is a shooter, and, and uh, Andy's more of a banger inside. Uh, some other kids to watch for a little bit, not necessarily in the city, but in other places is Andrew Zimmerman and out of Oostburg is one of the best players in the area. And Christian Wolf is, is grown to six foot eight out at Kohler. So, uh, Another tall wolf. <laughs> yeah, he's a load. And I wa we watched him a little bit last year. He's really worked on his game, and he's got a nice little baby hook. And uh, I, I, he, might, he might really have an impact out there at Kohler. Let's talk a little bit about All City. And uh, I think Andy Lancer was one of, the one of the players mentioned in the basketball Bible that came out recently. Who are some other players that you see 
possibly being all city. Well, we'll just go a little bit with what the, uh, the Wisconsin State yearbook did. You know, they mentioned uh, um, Matt Hemsing, who, who played last year with Sheboygan South. He's going to be one of the point guards out there. He had a very nice soccer season. Uh, Rob Kane is one of the returning uh, players at uh, Sheboygan North from that team that, that won conference. And, you know, they've lost a great deal of, of players as well. Uh, at Christian, you have Justin Simmons. He's, he averaged 12 points a game last year for, for them, so he'll be definitely an impact player. And there's no question, I think the player of the conference, or excuse me, the city will be Johnny Decker, 20-plus uh, points per game. And uh, uh, as Coach Decker mentioned, he's worked very hard on his footwork and his ball handling, so I think he's going to be maybe the player of the city. One of the things that Todd didn't allude to that I think is coming up this year and should happen, provided there aren't any injuries, John should set a new record for uh, scoring in the city. Yeah, and I mean, it's just, he's been exciting, and he started as a freshman coming up every, every single season to play, and uh, I believe he's taken... White Palm spot, right? That's Doesn't right, he, Nick. He, have, he is the uh, current uh, city holder, so we'll see if, pending injury, if, if he gets it, you know he's going to get enough shots. <laughs> <laughs> Todd will make sure of that. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the conference races, Chris, and let's start off with the Central Lakeshore Conference. I know the basketball yearbook predicts Oostburg and uh, Sheboygan Christian second. How do you see it? I think, as I mentioned with talking with Todd, I think on any given uh, night, teams are going to knock each other off. I really think the upper five teams are really going to be tough, and Howard's returns a lot of players as well. I got to go with Oostburg too for right now, just because of their front line. They're looking for some guard play in situation, but I wouldn't be surprised if Christian or Lutheran or, or any one of these you know other city teams to compete with Oostburg. And you know if they can get them going early, we'll see what happens. I think a big tilt will be that Christian Luther game right off the bat. I was thinking too with uh, Lutheran, they got the big horse and John Decker. You know, you never know when he might go off for 30, even 40 points, and it's pretty nice to have that on your side when you're going up against a team like Oostburg. Yeah, and they got a lot of size too. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Fox River Valley Conference. I was just uh, almost job dropped down is when I saw Green Bay West pick to take the conference this year. Yeah, I coached these when these guys were freshmen. I remember their their. Uh, they had a player by the name Orlando Anderson, who's now a senior, and they were really tough. Um, boy, I don't know. That's, that's another race that's going to be really close. I don't think there's any standout basketball teams that are going to be heads and shoulders above everybody else. I think North will be right in there with you know the consistency of the program and the, the things they do over the summer. Uh, I would not you know, take anything away from Manitowoc or even Green Bay Notre Dame to come out of there. Um, the South stand a chance uh, well, having an impact in a conference? I don't know if they have the, the, the enough players to play right now in there. I think it's going to be a learning experience for them. I think Hempstein and Lancer are going to be definitely keys there. But right now I'm going to take, let's see, let's take North. Okay. What a shock. You, you take North. Years. I'll take North also. Central Lakeshore, you have Oostburg. I'm going to take Sheboygan Christian, so we'll see how that pans out. By the way, I think Chris uh, won out in the football <laughs> pr predictions this year. I maybe should have went not with Oostburg. Yeah. But uh, we want to thank, first of all, Chris, thank you for uh, joining me on the show. It's been great. I want to thank you people for watching. Stay tuned to TV8. We have a full uh, schedule of games coming up with uh, high school and college. So uh, stay tuned to TV8. Uh, our first game is coming up. We can't wait to do it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you down the road.